Hello, welcome everyone tuning in today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Billy Mitchell, Editor-in-Chief of FedScoop, and today I'm joined by James Morrison, Distinguished Technologist with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. James, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to our conversation around the topics of digital uh, transformation, emerging technologies, zero trust, things like that discussed at uh, HPE Summit this year. Um, so I want to jump right in and ask you, you know, when it comes to the federal government and its progress around digital transformation, what sort of progress has been made in the recent months and years on the, the larger goals set forth by the uh, recent administrations and agencies? Yeah, I mean, I think one thing I've seen with the, with the federal government, I, I worked 30 years, uh, I was military and then also FBI for 22, is um, it's, it's really not quite as monolithic as we thought. Um, you know, there's so many different agencies um, and, and you have some agencies that are doing great. Um, they've, they've always been very, you know, focused on technology. And then we have others that are sort of lagging behind. And, and so I think um, that, that has been kind of the continuum we've seen um, over time. Uh, you know, uh, I think through the COVID pandemic and the work from home, uh, those, those uh, 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 federal entities that really clung on to, uh, you know, deploying that really started to have more conversations around security. Security uh, is, is at the foremost now. And, and, and you know, unfortunately, things like the solar winds breach um, have shown vulnerabilities in supply chain and, and vulnerabilities in, in who we allow access to, which starts to create conversation around how do we prevent that? Um, and so I think I've seen some really good conversations at high level um, about that. Um, and since security flows down through, you know, through it from, through from the executive branch, and through the you know the executives uh, in each uh, department, I think we're going to see more and more around that. Um, one good example is uh, you know the CMMC, you know, which is the Department of Defense uh, Cyber Maturation Model. Uh, how do we measure cybersecurity? How do we measure whether or not a company truly is secure? Is is going to be increasingly a conversation, and and I think CMMC or the idea of it will start expanding into other areas of the, the federal government. That's great. Thank you for that, James. Uh, you know, one of the things that I know is a big focus at the summit, and it's also a big focus for agencies uh, like the Department of Defense and military FBI, some of the ones you mentioned that you've had spent some time with is sort of performing the mission at the edge and sort of uh, the ability to do things at the edge based on cloud computing and new technology. So I'm, I'm interested, um, how have agencies like those uh, been able to improve their success at the edge uh, with, you know, enabling new emerging technologies <clears throat> like the cloud and, and things such as that? Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, there's a great statistic that shows that by 2025, 75% of our data will be created at the edge. Um, and then we'll have to traverse from the edge into our cloud or into our private networks, um, into our data centers. And, and again, especially in the military um, and, and a lot of the like NSA, FBI, uh, you know, they've looked at it and recognized they have to start considering that. Um, mobility, um, you, know, uh, you know, when I was in the FBI, you know, we were given, you know, cell phones. And so now you have, uh, you know, an MDM type solution. Um, what it means is it means that uh, more a conversation around zero trust as well. And zero trust has always been this buzzword um, how do I how do I first identify that that product at the edge and then take proper authentication and authorization around it? Um, and and so we've we've worked with them. A lot of technology companies have have sat and worked with with the federal government. And cloud is is a very interesting conversation because initially you know there was sort of this move to have one company uh, be the cloud provider, the public cloud provider. But there's been some sort of step back from that and a recognition that maybe diversification of cloud might be a good idea. Um, we've also had a lot of conversations at HPE around hybrid cloud, um, having the ability to maintain a certain element of control, uh, but also use uh, public cloud and meter it um, and make sure that we, we are able to manage it um, and not just expose us to new risk. Um, the networks of old, you know, I did a Windows NT in, in the old days and you know, uh, Windows 2000, we had one entry and exit point uh, to the to the you know out to the world through a firewall. Now our networks are much more porous. They're more east west. They're broader, um, and we have too many entry points. So we have to start changing that paradigm. I think. Yeah. Now that's I'm I'm glad you mentioned zero trust because that's where I wanted to take the conversation conversation next. Is you know what role does zero trust play in in this new um, environment? Like you said, that it it it's not just one exit point. There's not one firewall. Um, 
things are more porous and there's a greater, you know, uh, mass of, of entry points into a network. So how, how does Zero Trust sort of play a role in, in protecting those modern networks? Yeah, the first thing we have to do with Zero Trust is identify really what it is, right? Um, zero Trust has been a buzzword for so many years and there are 20,000 different implementations of what it means. So I think one of the things the federal government right now is doing is, is verifying what it means to them based upon their own data classifications. Um, you know, so like NSA, DOD, FBI, you know, they really look at things like top secret, secret and, and, and have, you know, those kind of classification levels. And that for zero trust has to be able to really protect those, those areas of that classification. Um, I, think, I think we're having a lot of good conversations around that, but even in, even in groups like OPM or GSA, where maybe it's not, a, a, it's not really a classification conversation, but how do we protect data? How does data about privacy? And, and I think you're gonna see a lot more conversation around privacy law. Um, you know, CCPA, the California Consumer Privacy Act, um, was was established while you know our vice president Kamala Harris was uh, the attorney general of California, and I think uh, we're going to see more. You know, how do we get closer to? And I'm not saying the European model of GDPR, but how do we make sure that we can protect that data that uh, would would uh, would would have put people at risk? And I, that's why I think zero trust first have to be identified. When I talk to you know federal agencies in particular what transformation are you trying to make, right? So that's a conversation we have to have and then really make sure we push that idea of zero trust in. One conversation we've been having is around this idea we call Spiffy Inspire, um, which is a cloud security open, open source architecture, um, which sets a standard for how do we secure not the server as much, but the services that the server provides. And I think, I think that's another change of paradigm, another change of conversation um, where we start saying the server is important, don't get me wrong, but in most of our worlds now we have virtualized servers or we have maybe have one particular you know, piece of hardware that's running five, six, seven different servers with different services. So making it about services security, data security and workflow security, I think is gonna be a conversation change as we go forward. That's great context. Thanks, James. Uh, let's close out with a question sort of looking to the future and um, you know, broadly, what emerging technologies do you think uh, are going to have the biggest impact on the government of tomorrow? Yeah, I think we, you know, I think you you hit on the first one is cloud. Um, you know, moving more data into that cloud and and really, you know, being able to share data across you know multiple um, you know iterations of of that that government agency. I think big data and big data exploitation is continuing to be a challenge, um, and I think uh, we're we're seeing. Uh, federal agencies really looking at how do I really get on my hands around that data and, and uh, securing it, but then also pulling insights out of it. Um, I think blockchain, um, there's a lot of conversation around blockchain and how do we take that technology and, and secure, um, maybe it's like for Medicaid fraud. Um, this was a conversation where uh, HHS was talking about how do we secure and make sure that the, the full transaction is occurring and we can, we can loop it back. Um, and then I think uh, when we took it like hyperconvergence, um, uh, government agencies like every other company don't want to don't want to actually have to buy new computers every two, three, you know, three years. So when we talk about the Green Lake model, which is a consumption model, we, we are pushing an HPE. Um, what if we can tell we could tell a federal agency you don't have to buy a computer anymore. Now what you can do is you can make it an OPEX model where you're paying for product by what you actually use. How much hard disk space do you use? How much? How many cores do you use? How much memory? And I think as we get to that conversation, it makes those budgets easier to control. Um, the federal government sometimes has sort of a, a surge and, and reaction sort of mode where they'll go out, they'll buy you know new product, and then a couple of years later they'll get another budget and they'll do it again. But in the in the increasing world of cyber crime and cybersecurity, that's not going to work. We have to have a much more continuous path towards security. And, and a better uh, a better model about how do we manage product. That's a great point, and I, I think it's very interesting how everything you said today sort of uh, weaves in and out and, and plays a central role together. So it's all, it's all very interesting. Uh, once again, James Morrison, thanks so much for your time today. Uh, it was a tremendous conversation. Look forward to catching up again in the near future. Thank you for the opportunity.